At the time of filming this video, we are currently in the midst of a heat wave here in the UK. Hottest on record. And I'm in a studio with bright lights that is making me sweat buckets even more than I should be. How much I would love to be on the planet of Hoth right now. Anyway, enough about real life issues. Let's do what we do. I'm Berryman, and this is 10 Things Wrong With. The Empire Strikes Back, also known as Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back, is a 1980 American space opera film. It tells the story of the ongoing war between the Galactic Empire, led by the Emperor, and the Rebel Alliance. After making their run from an attack on the planet Hoth by the Empire, Han Solo and Leia are on the run from the Empire, while Luke starts his training to master the Force. When the film was released, Empire Strike Back was met with mixed reviews from critics and fans conflicting over its darker and more mature themes compared to the light-hearted adventure of Star Wars. Yeah, I just want to go on record a little bit here that I'm well aware that that was at the time, but since then it has changed and not only is this the best Star Wars film, it's one of the best films of all time. I'm well aware of that, but yeah, at the time, it was critically panned. So what have I, the nitpicking YouTuber, found? Well, let's find out with 10 Things Wrong with The Empire Strikes Back. Number 10, Snowstorm. You know what? I so wish we were in a snowstorm right now. However, I'm on about the film. There is an issue with the snowstorm. So there's a scene where Luke Skywalker, he's caught out in the snowstorm and he's struggling to walk around. He's covering his face up because the snow's everywhere. The thing is, he's not actually acting. What happened was, is where they were filming, there was a snowstorm that shut down production. However, Ivan Kershnall, rather than losing this time, him and an unknown cameraman sat in the lobby of a hotel and sent Mark Hamill out just to walk around. <laughs> That's all he was doing. So yeah, a snowstorm so bad that shut down film production and you sent out your lead actor out into it and filmed him. I don't know whether that's an awesome prank, but it's not really nice. Or well, it is, I'm just evil. Number nine, Attack on Hoth. This is probably the worst battle in the entire franchise. Now on screen, visually it looks beautiful. However, when you really think about it, it was really bad on both sides. Now, first of all, the Empire come too close, they put shields up so they can't do an aerial bombardment. Okay, I get that, that was probably understandable, but the rest of it doesn't make sense. So they can't fire from space, so why don't they just send down their TIE bombers just to go through and bomb the planet? Because that way they're under the shield and then they can do it. That's option one, and before you say they can't do that, the AT-ATs walk through. But that's another little thing. The AT-ATs just walk all over the base. Why don't they just look down and fire? Because I'm sure they've got sensors and realize there's tunnels beneath them. And you don't believe they're walking over the base? Well, as they're in the base, you can hear the footsteps. And you would have only heard the footsteps if they're walking above you. So yeah, also that also means bad planning. Bad, bad planning. It's like, what? So yeah, the whole attack on Hoff, as much as it looked awesome, it was really bad. Number eight, thick armor. Yeah, I know, I know. I know this is still a part of the attack on Hoff, but it does deserve its own entry because the stupidity of this. So they go, the land speeders attacking the 8080s, and they're saying, oh, that armor's too thick for blasters. So, First thing they do is one of the coolest sequences of this film. Rope, round the legs, it falls over. Great. So what do they do now? They shoot it with blasters. That's the armor's too thick. To... See, that's, that doesn't really make sense. So like, you can't say it was too thick for blasters and then you blast it when it's falling over. It doesn't work one way or the other, but you said it was too thick and you still blow it up with blasters. That means you could have still blown it up with blasters without tripping it up. I do enjoy this film, really. Number seven, hidden. On one hand, yes, this move is a genius move, but on the other hand, it's 
the most idiotic thing ever. And it makes you think, how did the Empire get so, so powerful? So they're after the Millennium Falcon, it turns around, goes on an attack run to the Star Destroyer, voids all its uh, fire, and then disappears. Why does it disappear? Well, it's attached itself to the bridge of a Star Destroyer. Not the underbelly or some insignificant part, it's on the frigging bridge. <laughs> does that bridge not have windows? Well, we know it has windows because you can see it has windows. But yeah, it, um, <laughs> it's a genius move on one hand, but it's just so idiotic. D -d -d no one, no one knows this. It's like even like down below, look up, it's like, why is there a ship attached to the bridge of our ship? It's just stupidity. Number six, The Walking Dead. One thing that happened about the previous entry is Darth Vader kills Captain Nida. And you know what? Because <laughs> I've just really sliced that. He deserved to be killed for that. I, I, I fully am actually on Darth Vader's side on that. However, did Darth Vader really kill him? because after he's fallen to the ground, two people help him. They don't pick him up, they help him get up. Watch it carefully. He's literally moving his legs and he stands up on his own. So either Star Wars have zombies or they are faking every time they, they Darth Vader dies. Maybe Family Guy was right. Number five, sensors. Now, a lot of people said the prequels contradict the original trilogy. However, the original trilogy contradicts the original trilogy. So, in A New Hope, R2-D2 says, oh, there are creatures approaching from the southwest, meaning sand people, give us everyone enough time to disappear. Why didn't he do that in this film? Because that was filmed, done, released, everyone knew that R2-D2 has sensors. Yet Yoda manages to sneak up on both R2-D2 and Luke Skywalker. Why didn't R2-D2 detect him? Hmm. Now, there are going to be millions of millions of fan theories. However, the film itself didn't explain it. And that's where the error is. Number four, positioning. As Lando is taking Han, Leia and Chewie to meet Darth Vader, he takes a stroll through Cloud City but their positions change. So in one scene, it's Lando, Leia, Han, and then it, it cuts. It's still the same scene, it's just a different camera angle, and Hans and Lando just swap places. So a bit of a continuity error to there, but so yeah, that one's quite a biggie actually, when people just miraculously swap places. Magic. Number three, quick change. Yeah, another time that new costumes appear out of nowhere. So when they all get arrested, Chewie's thrown in one cell, Leia's thrown in another cell, and Han Solo is tortured. Then they put the three of them all together. Now that was done by Lando Calrissian. But Leia is wearing new clothes. Now, the Empire has shown they don't really care about Princess Leia. I mean, yes, Darth Vader was a dad, but no one knew that at that time. Not even him. He's not going to care if she has new clothes, but yeah, all of a sudden, she gets arrested wearing robes and then reappears wearing a white costume. It's... yeah. Why did a prisoner have new clothes? Number two, handcuffs. So Han Solo gets frozen. Okay. He goes down, his hands are cuffed, and he's got some rope around him so he can't escape. He goes down, gets frozen, comes back up, handcuffs are gone because he's now doing this, and the rope's gone. So, yeah. Where did the handcuffs, was there someone down there where he actually uncuffed him and let him go? Yeah, there was a bit of a, another issue there then. Number one, thief. Yeah, seriously, I have stolen this last one from Family Guy. If you've never actually seen the Family Guy uh, Star Wars trilogy, go and watch them, because they are brilliant. But yeah, this issue is ripped straight from that. Lando Calrissian is wearing Han Solo's clothes. I mean, you've got to admit, Han Solo does have lots of the same clothes, because he's always wearing the same clothes. So he's got a wardrobe full, full of them. Lando goes in and steals that. Yeah. Stolen that one. But it's still wrong. Final thoughts. 
This film has been classed one of the greatest sequels of all time. And it's fully deserved. It's an amazing, beautiful film once again. Yes, it's a little bit darker. And I actually like the fact that it's a little bit darker. I like the fact it's nothing, and I mean nothing like the original film. Now, it's better than the original sequel to this film, because there's actually two unofficial sequels. There's the Star Wars Holiday Special, which you may notice I've not actually covered that one. But there's also the original one, which was released as a book, which was supposed to be the sequel with no Han Solo. But yeah, that was awful and quite boring, actually, if you've ever read that book. Other than that, what they've actually got is a brilliant, thought-out, different film. And it works. Everything's the same, same characters, same energy, same look, just different story. Perfect. And I don't use that word lightly. There's not really much I can say about this film that hasn't been said before. Yes, this week I have been ultra nitpicky because it's so hard to find flaws in the original trilogy. So, there's not really much to say about the final thoughts. Yes, I love it. Yes, I know you love it. Do not tell me you don't love it because you are lying. So yeah, score, 10. <laughs> There was nothing more really to say about that. So yeah, the final thoughts section this week is very short. If you do don't like this film, let me know in the comments below because I can tell you now the rest of the community are just going to dislike that comment. So now we've done this week, let's move on to next week. We've done one great big space franchise. Let's do the other great big space franchise. It's a pretty easy clue. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.